Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and one of the things that rather ironically confuses a lot of flat earthers is planes. No, not the flat kind, but the kind that fly. Although, to be fair, they also get confused by flat planes as well. See their arguments about the sextant for more on that. So recently when looking through YouTube for a video to debunk, I came across a video titled The Aircraft's Rate of Descent Proves Flat Earth. And I just know from the title that the arguments presented in this video are going to be bad. And that's not because I was raised by Wolfie 6020, it's because any argument that tries to quote unquote prove Flat Earth is going to be bad just by default. If Flat Earthers actually came up with a good argument, I would be very impressed, to be honest. But anyway, let's actually see what this Flat Earthers argument is. Uh, yes, absolutely. There, number one, there is a rate of descent. A rate of descent, and we can all imagine. These are simple concepts, and I'd like to reiterate that in all of my technical discussion, in any of our technical discussion, it needs go further than, meaning it doesn't... We need no more complexity than 10th grade science, 10th grade math, Pythagorean theorem, 10th grade physics, 10th grade chemistry, basic chemistry. This is chemistry 101 at college level, 10th grade chemistry at the high school level. So there are a few things. Firstly, I'm very curious how they're going to bring in chemistry to this. I've never heard a flat earther bring up chemistry to try and prove flat earth. Or maybe they just don't know the difference between physics and chemistry. Let's see which one it is. And the second thing is, when you are using rather simple things, you have to make sure that you are applying them correctly. For example, let's take these magnets, because magnets apparently prove everything these days. We all know that F equals MA. Force equals mass times acceleration. Now if I just hold this magnet right here, stays completely still, you might come to the conclusion that because it's not accelerating, that there is no force acting upon it. And that is the conclusion that some people have come to, unfortunately. However, when I hold it like this, there are forces acting upon it. There is the force of gravity pushing down on it, and then there is the repulsive force of the atoms of my hand pushing the other way. So the net force on it is zero, but there are still forces that are acting upon it. Likewise, when you're using other things that may be quite simple, you gotta make sure that you're not missing out on something that could actually be rather important. One can imagine if an aircraft is flying at elevation 35,000 feet, well, it has to descend to land on the ground. Well, it's still flying in the air. It's not going to point its nose straight down and go straight to the ground. No, it's got to gradually descend from altitude down to zero. I mean, a plane could point its nose at the ground and go straight down. However, I just don't think that that's going to end well for anyone on that plane. Well, we call that rate of descent. A lot of people don't talk about this. Now, I'm bringing up a new topic to Flat Earth, and I'm really bringing up a new topic to the average pilot. The average pilot does not talk about rate of descent. Well, it is a good thing that they're bringing up a new topic to Flat Earth because I'm tired of hearing the same old arguments time and time again. It does get rather boring after a while. As for this being a new topic to pilots, I don't think you realize this, but pilots do have to land their aircraft eventually. They don't just stay in the air for their entire life. Like, do you think that passengers just get catapulted onto airplanes and then when they have to get off, they just parachute off and the pilot just has to live their life forever in the skies. As entertaining as that would be, I don't think that that is the case. And how do I know? Because I've talked with several pilots and they cannot quote their rate of descent. Why do I know it? Because I memorized Army Federal regula Regulated Rate of Descent, which was 500 feet per minute. For 18 years, I memorized 500 feet per minute. That's what, for, for my first two years as an Army aviator, I memorized 500 feet per minute is the standard rate of descent. That may be the standard rate of descent, but for different aircraft and for different conditions, there are going to be different rates of descent. And because of that, the rate of descent may have to be changed from flight to flight. And if that is the case, then it would make sense why pilots wouldn't have to memorize the rate of descent. 
Memorization does not work well when you find yourself in situations that may dynamically change. But we, in the Flat Earth community, we know that for an, air, for an airplane to fly around the globe, the supposed globe that is, <laughs> there's a rate of descent associated with eight inches per mile squared. Oh dear, this is just the pilots would have to keep on pointing their nose downwards in order to not fly off into space argument all over again, isn't it? I thought this was supposed to be a new argument this time. So if we do the math, the eight inches per mile squared at the average, assuming an average airspeed of 500 miles per hour of, or that's, that's really a ground speed, but but we're, it's moving through the air at 500 miles an hour. Associate that with eight inches per mile squared. Well, the math gives us the following, 2,777 feet per minute rate of descent for that airplane to follow the globe. So the question here is, how on earth did you get that number? Because I plugged in 500 divided by 60, square that, times it by eight, then divide it by 12. And that results in 46 feet per minute. Now here's the thing, I know how he got the answer that he did. What he did is instead of doing 500 divided by 60 then squaring that, he did 500 square that then divided by 60. Now I know what people are going to be pointing out in the comments, they're going to be saying he used the wrong formula for earth curve, but in this case it doesn't really matter. He used it so egregiously bad <laughs> that it doesn't matter whether he used the correct formula or not. He still used it incorrectly. But it gets better than that, because what a lot of flat earthers don't really realize is that planes just kind of follow the curve of the earth, and the whole time they are fighting against gravity. And because of this, the angle of the airplane is constantly changed so it's pointing the same direction regardless of how much earth curve it has flown over. Oh, and when I say the same direction, I mean relative to the surface of the Earth, of course. And all this results in the airplane not having to descend because it's just flying at a constant altitude. Now, I know that flat earthers are going to have a lot of difficulty trying to understand this, so I'm going to try and use an analogy, and please try to bear with me. Imagine that you are traveling in a car, and you have to turn left around a bend. When the car is traveling around the bend, how far do you think the car has to move left relative to the direction that it's pointing? And the answer here, of course, is barely anything, if at all, because it is always turning to point in the direction that it wants to go. And the same kind of concept applies to airplanes, except with airplanes, it's on the vertical axis. So I did some more math today, by the way, Vika. Thank you for asking. Oh dear, how badly is he going to screw the maths up now? So I looked up gravity. 32 feet per second squared. Okay, that's that's the quote supposed gravity, right? If you drop something it in a vacuum, okay, it falls at 32 feet per second squared. Well, let's convert that to feet per minute. That is 1,920 feet per minute. Okay, that's gravity. All right, so I figured out how he got that number. All he did is he took 32, times it by 60, and that's how he came up with that number. He's using maths very incorrectly here. The way that he used it was 32 feet per second, completely ignoring the squared part. There seems to be quite a bit of linear thinking that's going on here. They don't seem to be able to understand the concept of curves. Now, let's remember, an airplane flying around the curve of the globe at 500 miles an hour must maintain a rate of descent of 2,777 feet per minute, which is almost a thousand more feet per minute than something falling in free fall. That's absurd. Oh That's the most absurd measurement we could have. So I'm bringing that to flat to the flat earth community. That's what the math gives us, Vika, and everybody else. Well, no, because you're doing every bit of the maths completely wrong. You haven't accounted for the fact that gravity is an acceleration, not a speed. But that's not even relevant, because the way that a plane flies around the curve of the Earth does not mean that it's constantly descending. If this really were to be the next big flat Earth thing, then I don't see how anybody could seriously consider the Earth being flat, because these arguments are absolutely terrible. Yes, but what people seem to forget is the, the globe model, the heliocentric model, 
that science and math is never used in a function in a functioning application. Exactly. Never. Well, I mean, it's used for meteorology, GPS, well, anything to do with navigation, really. Like whether you're navigating in a plane or navigating in a boat, if you need to use a sextant. Um, what about seismology? That also uses a globe model. It seems like everything that does anything to do with the Earth uses a globe model. Anybody can do this math. Pilots don't know anything out anything that's not normal they have more experience with it but doesn't just because they're a pilot doesn't mean they they know something special anybody could do this math and anybody that does this math and can explain it well they're smarter they're smarter in this effect than the average pilot amen Take it and run so what you're saying is despite never having done any kind of pilots training you think you know more than all the pilots out there you know if only there was you know something to describe people like that. The first comment by F.E. Patriots, at a speed of 500 miles per hour, the plane would fly at just over eight miles per minute. Therefore, the rate of descent in right. the first minute from the starting position is just under 50 feet and then increases. Exponentially. Yeah. You know, I'm glad that someone actually pointed out the correction there. Although, everyone seems to have kind of missed the point. The point being that it's never really a descent because the aircraft will always just point in the direction that it's going. At no educational level, at, at zero educational level, is anyone ever taught the Earth curvature equation? You don't get it in, right. in, in, in preschool, you don't get it in elementary school, you don't get it in middle school. You don't get it in junior high, high school, university, undergraduate work, postgraduate work, doctoral work. You don't no, get you it. Talk about it. it because yeah. it doesn't exist. So I think the reason for not teaching people the formula for earth curvature is because who's going to need it? Yeah, sure. If you're working something where you are going to need it, you're probably taught about it. But in any other field you're probably not going to be taught about it because you don't need it. Like if I decide, okay, I want to be a land surveyor, then it would make sense that I'd get taught the formula for curvature. However, if I decided I want to be a checkout chick, then I'm not going to need to know the formula for earth curvature when I'm scanning groceries. The flatter, <laughs> the, curv the curvature equation was created by, by people who were looking for the curve. Yes, exactly. Well, no, it was made by people who measured the size of the Earth and went, okay, well, if Earth is a sphere with this size, then this should be the curvature of it. But, you know, what equation they gave us that makes zero sense is E equals MC squared, and you can't, oh, apply, it. Yep. You can't apply that to anything in real life. Th that's, well, that's to support their myth of the nuclear bombs. That's all that yeah, was. Yeah, and gravity. Hocus pocus and, to cover and, hocus pocus. That's, that's hey. their magic fairy dust. So the problem here is that these people have never had to use E equals MC squared at any point in their life. And honestly, most people will never have to use that at all either. But do you know another equation that most people will never have to use in their life either? N1 sine of theta 1 equals N2 sine of theta 2. Most people will never have to use Snell's law at any point in their life. It doesn't mean that it's wrong. It just means that people don't necessarily have to use it. The same goes for E equals MC squared. If you are a physicist, then yeah, you'll probably have to use it. But if you're not, chances are you won't. I, I looked up the quote by by Tesla on Einstein yeah. and, and I'll just reiterate it here. So because it was on the subject a couple minutes ago, Einstein's relativity work is a magnificent mathematical garb. This is heliocentrism <laughs> as well. Right. Magnificent medical garb, which fascinates, dazzles and makes people blind to the underlying errors. The theory is like a beggar clothed in purple whom ignorant people take for a king. Its exponents are brilliant men, but they are metaphysical. They are metaphysicists rather than scientists. Wow. Well, there it is. I love how people just quote Nikola Tesla as though he's an authority on everything. 
Just because you invent a few things doesn't mean that you're suddenly right about everything. You know, why aren't we quoting Hedy Lamarr as though she's right about everything, hmm? And the second thing is, Einstein's theories have repeatedly been tested and found to not be falsified. When theories just keep on predicting what should happen, that is pretty good evidence for that theory being correct. Now that is it for the video, but I'm really confused because they said that they're going to bring up chemistry. Why wasn't chemistry brought up at all? You know, if you say that you're going to bring up something like chemistry, then you should probably, you know, bring up something like chemistry rather than just saying that you're going to bring it up and not actually bringing it up. Because, in all honesty, it just makes you sound like you don't actually know what chemistry is. But with that, that is it for this video. Leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Be sure to join my Discord and leave a comment of what you'd like me to do for future videos. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. Huge Jars, MC Nutkin, Shaki, Wolfie, Mori, Graymore Ghost, Kid Vicious, and Sarcha Campbell. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.